And good afternoon, or we should say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the Bar Calden Showgrounds. Uh, historic match for the uh, a part of the 100-year celebrations between the Barkies Sanguanas and the Longreach Thompson Tigers. Cam Stallard in the chair alongside Mick Roach, who's calling this game, a former Sanguana himself. Uh, Roachie, good evening to you. Evening, Cameron. Um, evening, listeners, people that are following the live stream. Look, it's been a wonderful weekend in Barcourt and celebrating 100 years of rugby league, um, obviously this year. And just as I'm talking about it now, we've got all of the old boys of the club lining up on the field to form a guard of honour um, for the current team to run out and play tonight. Last night was the centenary dinner where teams of the decade from the 60s up to the current time were named. Uh, and there was a high number of those blokes who were actually here to receive their awards and celebrate the weekend. So that followed on from the races. Uh, here come the Goennas now. Yeah, the home side running out. We'll run through the two teams very, very shortly. And the Thompson Tigers won't be too far away either. It's great to be able to bring this game from the Central West here, Barky Showgrounds. And, Rochi, how was the dinner last night? It was a good occasion, I believe. Good attendance. It was great, mate. There was um, 200 seated tickets uh, for meals, and they were gone very early in the piece. I think they sold out Wednesday, but a few elected just to come and stand at the bar and watch proceedings. But, yeah, it was wonderful. It was the teams of the, teams of the century was re-announced after the Centenary League in 08, but also the decade teams that I mentioned before, and... You know, there's a few lies told and a few of the tries that may have been three metres turned into 70 metres with chip and chases and all the fibs that come along with that. So, wonderful occasion. It was really good for the club. Um, but, yeah, no, it was great, mate. And it's all all roads leading to this evening's game, which is kick-off is pending against Longreach Thompson Tigers. For those who don't have much information around the Central West competition, there's very few rivalries in any any league that um, can rival this Longreach Park Calder one. So... There'll be no love lost, and we'll see what unfolds tonight. Yeah, at the moment, I think in the Central West competition, the Blackwell Magpies are leading the comp undefeated. Congratulations to them, too. They've been named the best club in Australia with the Clubby Awards. Inside Def Sport ran. Defending Premiers. Yeah. And the Magpies, and yeah, they're going really well at the moment for a town that's population is on the decline due to the drought, which um, has been really tough for lots of people. But yeah, they've pulled it together, and footy's probably what's keeping their community going at the moment. Typical, we just have to wait for a kicking tee, but uh, we are looking forward to a start. Let's have a quick look at the two sides as we're about to get underway for the centenary match, a massive weekend here in Barky, as you would expect. So here we go, underway here at the Barcalden Showgrounds. It'll be the mighty Sanguanas to bring the ball first up. Let's have a look at the two teams, the Barcourt and Sanguinas. At fullback tonight is Zeke Thompson on the wings, Brendan Rafter and Sam Welsh. The centres are Reese Jones, Richard Edgerton. The halves are Reese Zahl and Tyson Kelly. Dean Malone and Adam Murphy are up front. Connor Williams is in at dummy half. Uh, we've got uh, Cameron Dave, Lockie Munro and James Edgerton in the back row on the bench. Mark Wren, Mick Hansen, Ricky Moxham, Anthony O'Dell, Kyle O'Dell, Clinton Haywood and Brad Harbottle. They round out the 20 and for the Longridge Thompson Tigers, Adam Hughes, the fullback, Riley Zeki and Jonathan Harwood are the wingers. Cam Davis, Sam Whip, the centres. Jake Burney and Jason Whitting are the are cutting, sorry, are the halves up front. Harold Arnold, Samuel Munns and Mitch Ebden. Uh, Steve Trask, Will Champion and Alec Tanks are the back row on the bench. James Blunt, Rolly Walton, Brody Swan, Nick Burns, Josh Howard and Andrew Rizika round out the 19. For the Thompson Tigers, they are now on the attack. A good opening set for the Barky Sanguinas, Roachie. Yeah, good, mate. Got to their kick. Um, they're wearing a traditional strip tonight. It's similar to the old jerseys you would have seen with the lace-up V, but obviously the modern version. But, yeah, great kick. Decent chase. Um, long reach aren't too inspirational with their first set of six. It's pretty slow going at the moment, but I'm sure they'll find their feet shortly. Uh, one thing I have to ask is, have they got cotton jerseys and they're using sand tonight? Well, mate, there was talk about the sand, but... Um, but Wasn't yeah. a beat? Well, we thought about getting it from the racetrack, but now that it's a grass track, that was too hard. You didn't want to pull up the brand-new racetrack? No, nah, I don't think that'd be a popular decision. No, not at all. So, Bark Alden now with the footy. It's been uh, end to end stuff. So, now they'll work their way into their own end here. The Barky Sanguinas. Oh, he's lost the footy. It's the old warhorse Dean Maloney there, just coming up with an error, trying to get up and play the footy. In this park, Calden side, there's a 
a really good mix of fellas that have played for a fair while, probably in, played last decade, um, as well as some kids that came through the junior system not so long ago. So, yeah, it's, it's a good lineup they've got at Ed's Night, but it's great to see. And even the Longreach side, just looking through their names, uh, the kids that played junior footy out of Longreach as well about, you know, seven or eight years ago. So, Longreach are going to get a good go at this. 30 metres out from the line. Now, I think it's the fullback getting into the action there for the uh, Thompson Tiger Shoes. Plays it. And the dummy half is Munns, and he works to the right-hand side of the field. Munns has a little bit of a look around. 20 metres away from the goal line, they're going to go to the left-hand side of the field. And this is Ebden. Mitch Ebden, There's I believe he uh, had a former... Uh, for a couple of games, former Sunshine Coast Falcon, I think. Yeah, well, there's a male around him being a pretty good... He's a school teacher at Longreach, apparently. I believe that's the case. Um, and the male is that he's probably there, go forward, man. So here we are, having a bit of a look, is the dummy half, Munns. Slow play the ball. We'll go out into their 5-8. Bernie it is. And he's rushed up some good defence there. Riley, uh, Ricky Moxon making the tackle. And they're going to go to the right-hand side of the field. Fullback puts a grubber in. Picked up well, though, on the left edge. He should have been going over the top there. He's two outside men were unmarked. And anyway, it's easy to watch from here and say that. Good crowd here, as you'd expect. Easter Sunday footy. Couldn't get any better in the Central West. Just had an appearance from the Easter Bunny too, Cameron, about 30 minutes prior to kickoff. That's Obviously fantastic. one of the Easter Bunny's helpers just coming to do the job this evening. And they... Um, Certainly a name that's well known around the Central Highlands, which we might disclose later on. So the Barky Sanguanas now playing at uh, 35 metres. And on the last kick there, the half Tyson Might get Kelly. a bounce here. Oh, ugly bounce. Penalty just a tad high, I think, from referee Bobby McLeod. Who's new to the Central West, I believe. Um, as a referee, yeah. yeah as, a new, as a referee. Bobby McLeod... Um, played, he came across last year, played a couple of games for Barkey, I believe, but he's a black or boy, he's that Ralph McLeod, he's a, ta sorry, a Tambo legend. Tambo, that a footy side back in the day? Yeah, the Tambo Eagles. The mighty Tambo Eagles, eh? And on the um, half grass, half sand field, it was plenty of support players overran the pass there. Appealing for the penalty is the Thompson Tigers, they don't get it. And for, for Tigers, they don't have an orange strip, which is interesting. I mean, they, yeah, they never have. They're the Roosters' colours. They're known um, as the Tigers. They're they're known, well, they're known as the Tigers, but affectionately in Bark Calden, they're known as the Yabbies. That's fair enough. Here we go. Now White. Trask with the ball. The Thompson Tigers. Slow to play it back to Munns. We'll go back into the open side of the field. Now for Mitch Ebden again. The men, I'm sure, to watch tonight for the Thompson Tigers. They'll go back to the right-hand side of the field. Little juggle there from Hughes. He kicks it. Huge kick. Deep kick. Well taken, Rafter, in the in-goal area. Seven tackle restart coming. Yeah, Brendan Rafter is um, one of the young blokes. He's about six or seven in the... Oh, the here we go. The fullback, Thompson. Yeah, great. Zach, Zeke Thompson. Here he runs. Can he He's get quick. there? Here he goes. Shut the gate. He's going to score first. Home crowd, love it. He'll readjust himself underneath the posts. And a handy start for the Barky. Sanguin is in their 100th year celebrations in Barky. 4-0 with a kick to come. Yeah, it was a good break from Zeke Thompson. He took a one-up off the 20-meter restart and just weaved his way through. And he turned the... It was um, Bronson Sherry, like the afterburn, as he pulled on there to rip around the fullback. And a bit of a celebration prior to putting it down, which is always fraught with danger, but... All's well that ends well. Representative player, I know, uh, Zeke Thompson. Last year was part of the Queensland Outback side. They had that uh, emphatic victory against northern remote areas. So now a kick for goal. And it goes over the black dot. 6-0 lead to the home side here in Barcaldon against the mighty Thompson Tigers. Be sure to hit us up on Facebook. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Got a few viewers, Rochi. Oh, that's uh, good, mate. Kayleen Johnson Buckley says hi from the sunny coast. Go the mighty Guanas. Hope they um hope they stay for the full trip, or we might have talked them out of viewing by then. Uh, Karen Harbottle 
And now Brad's yep. mother. No, no, mother, yep, that's mother, right. Yes. Uh, tuning in from Brisbane. Bradley Harbottle. He's a bit of a journeyman. He's floated all around the Central Highlands in particular of late. Just um, Bottle's just one of those blokes that doesn't particularly like training too much and will do anything he can to avoid it. But um, on game day, you just know he's going to give you absolutely everything. And, and nine times out of ten, it certainly is enough. Looking forward for when he is injected into the game. A long pass has gone into touch here on this western side of the field. And, uh, unlucky for the winger rafter. Just couldn't grasp it. And the Thompson Tigers, well, they get a reprieve. Because potentially if uh, rafter had grabbed that ball and ran down the western touchline, it could have been two tries in two minutes. Yeah, it wouldn't have been to start there after. So we're eight minutes in at the moment. It's obviously one try to nothing. 6-0 to the sand goers and long reach and now get the footy just over halfway so their chance to have some good ball for viewers who are not quite aware of the central west competition uh Rochi runs march to june um just due to i think rodeos and it's just worked it yeah you know it, it just worked better out here in the central west yeah i think so it um it went the traditional length and there was lots of gaps in between so you effectively were sort of having a um your first game of the season three or four times during the year and it's hard to keep momentum up so Rather than competing with other codes, they decided let's just do it in a chunk, and, and I, I haven't heard any feedback that would suggest it's not popular. So the Thompson Tigers get a, another penalty. They're going to take the tap. Munns in a dummy half. Goes on to the right edge of the field. Now I'll play it back to Munns here on the open side. Ebden. Going hard for the goal line. Trailing six points to nil, the Thompson Tigers. The 100-year celebrations in Barky as they go through the hands. Oh, he read that beautifully, oh. Rafter. Come off his wing and put the pressure on that receiver then, and he had, didn't have eyes for that footy on any occasion. But they've retained possession. Munns, back to Ebden. Centre field. Oh, he's, he's a good go-forward man for them, mate. Drags forward. Munns out of dummy half a ball. They were short. Gee, if they just passed it. Numbers, they had a four-man overlap on the right side of the field. They've still got it. Munns looks to go back to the left-hand side of the field. Through their half, that's Bernie. Jake Bernie, both halves for the long reach side, but Western Wave players challenged a couple of years ago. Munns for the goal line. It's dragged down. Good goal line defence, though, for the Barky Sanguanis. Oh, short ball, Ebden trying to go underneath the posts. Here's the last now for the Thompson Tigers. Now they'll fire out, go through the hands. That is Hughes who puts it's it on way the boot. too big, but it's got a touch, so in, in Thompson, goal. can he get out? Answer is no. Well, that um, that's a result that they probably didn't deserve long reach. Hey, that was a terribly constructed set given they had six goes inside the 40, but they've come away with a repeat set, and I guess in the end that's the result they wanted. Uh, it looks like they're just set to try and run Ebden through the middle here and just see what they can get out the back of it. But a couple of options maybe haven't been their best, but we'll see how that unfolds as the game progresses. I love their footy out here in the Central West. Yeah, good crowd streaming in, mate. Good crowd. There's um, after the dinner last night, there's still a lot of people floating around with a stubby in hand. So That's good. That's the, a good thing. Maybe the, not the at late, 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, yeah, I don't think there would have been. Might have had a little afternoon nap. Did you have a little sleep? You know the age of my children, Cameron. I don't have naps. So now the Thompson Tigers, whilst behind on the scoreboard, a dominating possession early in this clash. Certainly and field position. Yeah, certainly field position as well. That's Champion who plays it slowly. Back to Munns again. Oh, he throws a dummy. Has a bit of a look up. Ebden going into acting half. Go to cutting the half. Through the hands, Hughes. If he just went one more man out, they could have been seen tr their first points. The Thompson Tigers, not to be Munns. Short side again. Through the hands, Hughes links up with the winger. And I reckon it's Ziski, the winger who scores on the far side of the field, the eastern side. They score first, their first points. The Thompson Tigers, 6-4. Well, they've had uh, numbers on that side all the time they've been down on the line. They just haven't been able to make the right decision to get to it. But um, good work that time. They just punched on back into the post and then went short off the ruck and then played out the back. And it was a good try. Well done. Barky um, just need to adjust their numbers on their left edge defence. 
They needed points, the Thompson Tigers, with that much possession, particularly down Barkey's end of the field. And a uh, few Thompson Tigers fans here at Barkey, yeah, inundated with their maroon. Yeah, there'll be a few floating around. Had some junior games. It's been a big day here today. Yeah, it has, mate. Emerald Tigers brought a couple of sides out to play in the 15s and 16s. Oh, 14s and 16s maybe against the Central West sides. And um, and also Longreach under 10s played the Goanna under 10s directly before kickoff. So it's been a good um, yeah, good Easter Sunday out here in the country. And the uh, Centenary Organising Committee have done a very good job setting up the weekend as they did. And... Um, yeah, I think a lot of old boys have come back, and old ladies and, and wives of deceased players, and, yeah, there's been lots. It's been wonderful. I think a 100-year celebration is a fantastic thing for the club. I know St. George had theirs last night. The Dragons? Yeah, no, we won't talk about that game. Uh, no, the mighty Dragons. I think they're the, oh, St. They were the St. Saints out at... Um, oh, if anyone knows, they can just let us know who um, the St. George out at Saint Western George. Queensland Western Rugby Queensland. League team is. Well, I believe I saw something on social media last night to suggest that they uh, had their centenary last night. Now the Thompson Tigers once again to work their way out of their own half after scoring their first points. Ebden, another good run from him. Go out the back, Hughes, just outside the halfway line goes downfield. This time it will be guided dead. No, by Thompson, silly, no, it won't. Oh, it's pulled up. A good kick from Hughes from just outside of his halfway line. I like the work of his fullback early in the game. He's um, very nippy and positional play is very good. Well, another man who was uh, part of that Queensland outback side, Adam Hughes, was last year. They had the outback senior trials, actually, to pick that team here at Barkey last year. So good to see that uh, Rugby League still very much alive. Rugby League heartland here in the Central West. They love their footy. I was talking about the Barkey fullback, mate. We but about Adam Hughes football. certainly um, he certainly was a wonderful junior footballer. I didn't realise he's still in Longreach, so there you go. Should have read my team list a bit better. So here's the last now, just on halfway. Williams fires it out. Good high kick there from the half, Kelly. Taken very well from Hughes. Good support from Murphy, the Barkey front rower, running through with a good kick chase. Scoot out of dummy half. While well, they're working out of their own end, you are a former Sanguana. Reminisce some of, some of the good times here at the Barky Showgrounds, Rochi. What? Tell us your best moment. My, my best moment. I came out here in my um, nearly 30s, and I wasn't one of those blokes that was a good enough footballer when he should have been at his prime to be able to play at that age. But had a run, and but um, yeah, look, that first year um, the Goanas won the premiership. Um, and then there was, I think that was a third in a row, a second round. They certainly were a fourth. Had some wonderful young footballers who were just content with living in Bark Gordon and playing here. That would not, three or four would not have been out of place in an IRC side. Uh, very proud town. It's one of those places where when you go and get the paper on a Sunday morning, if the sides had a win, people are really happy and upbeat. But if the side has had a loss, they feel that with you too. So, um, best memories of being a Goanna is probably how the community gets behind the club. I had the pleasure of coaching them in my last year here as well. Uh, the Probably the hardest thing is the away trips to Winton really aren't much fun. Uh, four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon in Winton. It's not the most glorious of occasion. No. No, I agree. Good take there from Thompson. You're right, uh, Rochi, the, the work from him. For a younger fella, I think he's only 20 or so years of age. Now the, Just Frank Lamley coming off the bench for Longreach in the 23. No, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Penalty to the Barky Sanguanas. Number 23 for the Thompson Tigers is uh, Nick Burns. He's the former Thompson Tigers president, Frank Lamley. I don't think he, he obviously resides still in Longreach, but I don't think he's with the club this year. I think uh, Gavin Ballard, the president of the club this year. He, I think Gavin's coaching as well. He's coaching so, as yeah. well. One man band. Look, he's a good man to have in charge because he'll um, he's got a no nonsense approach to everything he does. Gavin and the people, the young blokes in Longreach, will want to play for him as well. So it's um, interesting to see how their year pans out under the guidance of Gav, the um, owner operator of the mighty Bird Card Bird Cage Hotel, 
in long reach. Fantastic establishment. They work it through the hands. Back rower now for the Sanguanas. Dave. Looking to play back to Young Williams in a dummy half. Then a Kelly. And the halfback will run the ball himself. They go to the right-hand side of the field, linking in. Oh, great ball away. Fantastic oh. ball from Thompson. But Edgerton has spilt it. He just held on to the footy. It was try time to the home side. He lost it just before the goal line, so it'll be a scrum. And the Tigers to have the feet. Again, another good involvement from the fullback, Thompson. But um, yeah, Edge, and I thought maybe he was probably thinking about, am I just catch pass on this straight away or hang on to it? And in the interim of all of that, he ended up coughing it up. But the skipper will be better for that, and I'm sure his next involvement will be top class. Tell you what, there is plenty of support for the mighty Barky Sanguanas. You mean on social media? On social media. Oh, right. Sorry so there's to certainly is plenty here. But there's plenty here, definitely. People from all over the place too, Cam, I imagine. It's um, it's incredible the people you run into that have some at some stage of their life either been a Goanna or have lived in Bar Calden. It's a, for a Western town, it has a lot of people float through it. Still one of the better club names too, I reckon, in Queensland. Yeah, well, I, I was flicked past an interview with ABC Capricorni yesterday morning and we could no one could really come up with why they're called the sand going except that there's lots of them around so Fair although enough. a better story than that would be heaps better we sort of didn't have the option well that's good enough now for uh nick burns the thompson tigers go through the hand shoes again kicks but again fielded well by rafter here on the right edge for the barky sanguine it's good chase oh just a little bit high the old saying goes, you can't run without heads. We're bringing back the old retro tackle, the retro jersey we see from the Barky Sanguanas. Yeah, well, he's not your retro wing, wing, winger. Um, he's quite a tall lad, Brendan Rafter, and the former halfback who's made his way to the wing. And Is that yeah. a promotional demotion? Well, I would suggest that being 1-13 to 13 in this side would be a promotion, Cameron, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Sorry to all those wingers who might be tuning in tonight. Anyway, they take the tap. It's More good. legs on for the... Clinton Haywood, it's a good carry there. Back to Williams. Goes into the 5'8 Zal. They're looking really well. The service from Dummy Half from Connor Williams is really good. They go now. Good inside ball. Good carry for the Barky Sanguan as they're tackled now about five metres out from the line. It's Williams it is. Back to Maynard. Oh, he spilt it right in front of the post. Unfortunately for the home side, so another scrum to pack 10 metres out from the goal posts. Yeah, they've just got to keep keeping on, Barky. They're creating great opportunities when they get an option, to, uh, get the chance down here. And There's um, there's not much. I'd just be concerned about the um, water runners for Barky. There's one of them doesn't look like he's going to get much water out there. He's got the hat on backwards and looks like he's come from the gym, not a footy field, so... Hope the players don't suffer today because of his lack of involvement. Plenty of action after the footy, live band and all that here at the... Uh, uh, Cameron morning. Cusack, who's a oh, yes. former Townsville fellow who's <clears throat> just moved to Longreach. He'd be here cheering the Tigers on. Um, him and his fiance, I believe she is, and their band. And they played at the dinner last night. They're very good. Very impressive. So Now... Getting close to the sideline there, keeping the locals enthused. The Thompson Tigers now. Oh, good contact there from the centre. Fantastic effort, Richard yeah, Edgerton. That's Edgerton. That's skipper. Munns going to Ebden once again. I think that was the other prop, mate, wasn't it? I think that's the big fella, Ebden. No, that's the other no, one. That's the other one. Very similar, Dean. Uh, it is very Harry. similar, except Edgerton, uh, the, the other fellow makes about 10 metres. He didn't make one. So out the back of shoes. From inside the 40, it goes high again. And into the breadbasket of Rafter. So puts the step on. And they're going to start their set of six now. 25 metres out from the line. Their other winger. 
Welsh. Plays it back to Williams again. Good offload. Good second phase play. Williams waiting there. I love these retro jerseys. The long sleeve. Yeah, they'd be style. fairly handy in a, in a winter barky night as well, the long sleeves. Can get a bit fresh here in the AM. 26 degrees at the moment. That's beautiful, mate. The weather's been magical this weekend. Downward kick. They get a good bounce, the Barky Sanguinas. The bounce they want, they'll pack a scrum 10 metres in. Uh, not the seven tackle restart, which the Thompson Tigers were hoping for. I, bet, I think the middlemen for Longridge will be quite pleased it went out themselves, mate. There are um, a lot of hands on hips. What have we got over there? Is that 17 minutes to half time? Yeah, 17, 17 yeah, minutes so to They're going to be looking time. for an uh, injection of energy off the bench. Or well, they're just going to have to try and play smart through these next five minutes. That's the way run at water runners in jeans, eh? In your opinion? Yes or no? Like it, don't like it? Oh, look, mate, I um, I don't want to be too harsh on him. The, the situation could be that he's been pulled out of the bar to help out. Um, but if, in fact, it's pre-organised, I suggest that his inner thighs won't like it. It's not for me to like it or not. Uh, uh, is that Gav Ballard? Playing? No, no, running water in the jeans. Oh, it might be. Yeah. He has to go back and man the pub tonight, mate. That's why he's doing it. Just change, change shirts and away he goes. All rounder. Well, a few people, a few tuning in, they've said Sandra Winning has said her all-time favourite commentary line from one of the old Barky videotape games is he wouldn't know bleep from pineapple jelly. You know anything about oh, that one? I don't know that one, but I reckon that would have had to have been Doug Gesh. Um, he's no longer with us, but Doug Gesh was the caller, and he just he was um, he was in the in the Central West and for Barky, he was at the Ray Warren level. He was iconic Geshi and a good man that he's missed every day in this town. Well, Toby Stancy has said uh, on Facebook the commentary is nearly as good as Dougie Gesh as an Oscar, so yeah. you'll be able to shed yeah. some more light into that one. Yeah, so um, it's Oscar's boy. He's a, he's a good fella, Tobe, and um, his uncle got named in the team of the decade from the 70s, uh, from the 80s, I think. I can't remember which one, Toby, but um, good to have you listening, mate. And yeah, you're right. It's some of the one-liners Oscar come out with we wouldn't even think to match. Ah, fantastic. And the Dragons are still kicking on for him too. Fantastic to see so much support on uh, Facebook tonight for the Mighty Sanguiners here. That their game tonight, part of the 100-year celebrations the Thompson Tigers just work the ball into the Barky Sanguana's half. Slow to play it. Now come out the back. That is the 5-8 Bernie putting it on the boot. They get a lucky bounce. Get a great result. Plucked out of the air. Now to touch the mid of the Sanguana's. Not sure the call is at a six to go. No, I don't think it was the last, mate. Here we go. Ebden for the goal line now. Trying to muscle his way over. Body swarm him. And uh, that is held up. And they're going to bring it out to the 10. And I think that was the last tackle. I'd like to see Longridge go. Well, I wouldn't because I don't particularly want them to win. But they should be going to their right a bit more. Um, they're, they're well structured on their right. They've got good depth. And they, they seem to just be holding an overlap every time. And they're just not going there. They always punch it back to the middle, which I don't think is working in their favour. It looks like Barkley lost the ball. That is a turnover. Ball. Oh, Barky have been very lucky to only have 6-4 on the scoreboard considering mm. the possession and particularly down their danger end. Mitch Ebden now looking to play it. Back to Munns. Short side. Run for Walton. Oh, nice dummy from Munns. Great individual try for him. They score their second, take the lead. Eight points to six. Yeah, it's a way to field position field position down here and um, you know you can defend well but you can't defend all day but Longreach is sticking in here there like I said their middlemen are looking tired but but the likes of Hughes and uh, Jake Burney's been a standout so far and the, and the dummy half Munns has been good as well so they're along off the back of that big front rower um, what's his name the front rower Ebden. L Ebden Mitch Ebden so the Tigers hit the front 8-6 13 to go first half so, another name uh, iconic in the Central West, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Bashford with the Jeff flag. Jeff Bashford. With the touch flag. Now, 
now the kick will be taken by Jason Winning. Uh, cutting, sorry. Cutting. Cutting. Another Western Wave graduate. There's a few in this side. Ooh, oh, hits Jace. the uh, left upright. He didn't learn that in grade six. So the wonderful, conversion. wonderful Thompson Tiger family actually the cuttings. I think all of, he's the youngest of the boys, and I think all three of them have played for Longreach. Um, Colin, Gary, and then young Jason. Mum Sue is a wonderful lady who works at the school in Longreach. So Sue's happening to be watching or listening or whatever you do on Facebook. Um, hello to you. Watching these watching, days. Watching right. these days. The power of technology. Now the Thompson Tigers again. Bring it forward. 30 metres outside of their own line. Munns goes into who I think is the back row for the Thompson Tigers. Will Champion. Number 12. Oh, no. Uh, he spills it there. Williams right on the money. They've a good ball here, about 38 metres out. But you know that because you're watching. Uh, prop so, forward, forward. Still trying to get a handle on this not being Spreaker, Cameron. Bear Perfect. with me. That's okay. So, the Sanguanas now go wide. Good oh, service back. from Kelly. Gone now to uh, Zeke Thompson. He's already scored one try. Quickly, out of dummy half. That's great work from Williams. I think he's probably held up that. There's some bodies in there. Yep. Well, they'll come back and reset. <laughs> so, with 11 to go in this first half here, the Barky Sanguin has put it on oh. the boot. You got lucky there. It's been spilt. You're right. It was certainly going to be a very deep kick. Probably would have easily gone dead, I'd think. I'm sure by about 1 to 12. That'll be intentional. Intentionally shot at him to knock it on. So, but certainly some of those stories last night coming out of that dinner. Well, as time progresses, they just get better and better. They do get better, yep. So the scrum is about to be packed 10 metres out. The uh, back of the scrum now. Anthony O'Dell, who plays it. That might be 18. Kyle, Kyle O'Dell, his brother oh. from dummy half. Williams gets there. Connor Williams, he's nearly knocked the post over. Oh, it certainly seemed like that. Another good try from the Barky Sanguan is another individual try we've seen now. And they... Hit the front once again, 10 points to 8. Yeah, Connor Williams is another under 7s to 1st grade footballer for Bark Gordon. And yeah, he's um, worked hard in his footy, Connor. And he's, from what I've seen tonight, I haven't seen him play 1st grade. Actually, I think he came over and played a bit for the Cowboys last year. Yes, uh, yes. In the was, Central Highlands the... competition. In the 20s, I think. And then maybe yeah, even... The 20s. He might have, I think he may had... have had a start or two in 1st grade as well. But he's... Yeah, he had a game uh, when they went to the Gemfields last year. Yeah, and his service out of dummy half is really crisp. And he's he's a bit... Up, just watching him, he's a bit old school. A bit of an old school hooker with the support play and the looking up out of dummy half and giving good service. So, certainly important part of this side during this first half. So, 12-10, the 12-8... Conversion was successful from in front. Not sure who kicked that. No, I would expect. Uh, Might have been the 5 8, was it? Yeah, he's the one walking back to get into his position. So here we go. Short kickoff. And Williams is onto it. So it didn't work for the Thompson Tigers. Marky Sanguan is now get their second tackle. Five short of halfway. Uh, Odell goes now to his brother Kyle Odell. I assume they're brothers anyway. Yeah, yeah. they are, mate. It's good to know. Here he goes, Odell again. Good carry forward there on the left edge. Oh, he spilt it. But Penalty. The, yeah, hand in it. So proud to have you with that decision, as you'd expect. You would 
and uh, think that they look like they're going to take the tap. No, no, then yeah, they'll play on here. Surely. Oh, he would be kicking for two. They're going to kick for touch to assume that. Kelly finds touch, so they'll be on the attack here. They've got a good put together a good set of six here. They should get points, uh, Colton. So Williams, here we go, Odell runs onto it. Barnstorming run from the prop forward. They, they go out into the hands, that's the halfback, Kelly. Got something set here on the right-hand side of the field. Zao, through the hands, down to the lock, gives it oh, away, he's done it again. spilt it again, Edgerton. Nearly identical. Oh, it's a bit of a shame. He um, he's a good kid, Richard Edgerton. and he obviously the skipper of this side, and he was given the um, honour of cutting the centenary cake last night. I'm glad he wasn't struggling with the knife like he has at the footy tonight. Well, it's glad that he didn't bring it out anyway. Yeah, <laughs> he did try and cut a rectangular cake, starting from a midline on a diagonal. That was news to me, but anyhow. So the Thompson Tigers. The footy. Nine short of the halfway line, six and a half remaining in this first half of footy. Lowish kick. Heaps of time for Thompson to uh, gain possession. This is fullback again, mate, Thompson. Here we go. This is going to be a good start to the set. They're going to get the first tackle from the halfway line. Good Edgerton. carry from Edgerton. Good recovery from him. Williams, Thompson again. Options either side of him through a little dummy. It's finally brought to ground now. Short side play. I don't know whether the marker was square there. The referee was happy with him. He's doing a good job, referee McLeod. Never thought I'd be sitting in the Highlands with the McLeod refereeing, but he's doing a great job. Sorry, in the Central West. He's doing a great job. He's the last now for the Barky Sanguanas. Go to the short side, ball out Raff in the over. rafter and scores. It's easy try, they thread the needle. He deserves a try, Rafter. He's played well so far in the first half. They extend their lead 16 8. Well, that's, that's great. It's just great vision again. They um, The numbers were obvious, and then the must be the left centre involved in the tackle tried to scoot his way back into the centre position. But the dummy half just saw enough to cut. I think he went across three or four blokes and just put Rafter over in the corner. It wasn't easy for Rafter, a little bit of work to do. But Zala lined this one up. Cameron, you could call this, mate. This is right in front of us. So, yeah, Reese Zal. Give us your best Rex Moss up. You probably don't remember him. He was, he was gone before name. you turned up. The old Do long it. enough, it's high enough, it's straight between the posts. Just let you take on this. Here we go, Zal. Oh, he's hooked it. It's not even close. You know what? It's, it's hitting the van on site B3. <laughs> it's in all sorts of trouble. The, um, the Kokoda was ducking there. Well, that was uh he didn't give him much time no anyway. usually goal kickers take an eternity to kick it but he doesn't stuff around guarantee you the water runner simon mitchell just gave him some kicking advice too but with, that, with no jurisdiction to do so with the, the advice in, in any hand is it going to be handy or For, no, terrible. no terrible former captain former coach and life member michael hansen's on now so the Barky Sanguaners, it's good to see some old boys. Uh, He's actually come on to replace the captain. Edgerton's been replaced for whatever reason that might be. A bit of a spell. Maybe. So now Williams it is. We're going to dummy half. It's Murph in the front rower. There they go. To Ricky Boxham. Back on the field for the Sanguinis. Plays it quickly. Now the back. Good ball away. Great oh. ball away. The 5 8 puts it on the boot. Oh, well taken there from the winger. Thompson Tigers Harwood. He's about uh, 30 centimetres short of that uh, in goal area on the uh, southern end of the ground. Three minutes remaining in the first half. 
prop forward for the Thompson Tigers. Months to the right hand side. Brad Harbottle now on for the uh, Sanguan is making that tackle. Now the. Uh, That's a big hoof. Huge hip hoof. Hughes was doing the kicking. And they're going to start their centre six now, 25 metres away. Two minutes remaining, first half. Ooh, wayward pass. It's picked up by the back row of Munro. Good well, point. He, he led with a vicious left hand palm then, too, Munro. I mean, he's a good bloke. His first name's Cameron, so. <laughs> His first name's Lachlan. It's a lock. I'm looking at the wrong one. And yeah, I'll, you're I've, right. Um, yeah, I'm good mates with the mum run. I'm not sure oh, yeah. the back name sets him up to be too good a bloke. Yeah, fair enough. Now, it is Lachlan Munro, you're right. You'll say that a few times tonight, Cameron. <laughs> Trip to Specsavers on Tuesday, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> downward kick, and that'll go uh, touch in goal. 20 metre restart. So what have we got at 16-8, Barky? That, you know, they'd probably be happy with that. They, um, apart from... They've probably bombed two, but they've capitalised on their visits to the other end pretty well. They've probably only had six visits down there. Um, Longreach had a lot of footy, probably haven't played as smart, but I think that they can utilise their right a lot more in the opposition, opposition's half that they might come up with some more points. But with a minute to go, it's setting ourselves up for a great second half here, but Longreach aren't done with yet. So they carry the ball forward. Thompson Tigers into the final minute of play, first half. They'd like, like a try here, Mitch Ebden goes to the line, had men outside of him, but he chooses to take the tackle. Here's the last now for the Thompson Tigers. Centre ground, Hughes again, kicks it. It's gone straight into the mittens of the... Uh, 5-8, I think. Reese Zahl back there to pick up. The eastern side of the field. You would assume this will be the last set of six of the first half. Playing a 10 short of halfway. Oh, good ball. Great to ball. Line. Fantastic ball. Running through Rent. Odell. They're yes, away. The ball right on the hooter. The Sanguanas will score underneath the posts. And it really goes back to the run there from, uh, I think it was Brad Harbottle who took it to the line before giving it away to Odell and he charged through. Yep. No, it was good footy. Great on the bell. It's um, yeah, playing, to the, playing to the last minute, last second, and the whistle of each half is really important. So it gives going as a probably a... Uh, an advantage that they haven't earned. So um, they'll probably head to the sheds here at 22 to eight. And coach Quack will be very happy with that. Reese Zahl, I don't think he's gonna muck around with kicking this one either. Right in front of the post. Someone told Reese Zahl the shot clock isn't on, on in Bar Court tonight. He gets stuck into him, doesn't he? He does. Put it down and get stuck in. 22 points to six here at half time. Uh, Thompson Tigers certainly wouldn't have wanted that last try, as you said, Roach. They probably would have been happy at half time to go into the sheds at 16 to 8, but it's not to be 22 to 8. What's your thoughts on this uh, game here as part of the 100 year celebrations? Yeah, the game of footy itself, firstly, it's, um, it, started, it started off really tardy, I thought. The first five or ten minutes, really slow pace, and there wasn't a lot of urgency, but as bodies have got tired and the little blokes have picked up the speed, it's turned into a pretty good spectacle. Like I said just before halftime, Barky have capitalised on their opportunities relatively well. Uh, I think Coach Aylett will be quite pleased with that. The Tigers probably have, in the first 25 minutes of that half, dominated field position pretty well, so their coach will be happy with that as well. So both sides, it certainly isn't over, um, but both sides will address their weaknesses and come out in the second half looking to looking to improve on what they've done and like I said Longreach just need to get a bit more creative when they've got the footy. I think it's great you know the Central West footy alive and well there's hard fast runs to like to see just boards that want to put their hand up and just run hard at the line. Yeah they do mate and with the um, 
with the unlimited interchange out here and so many reserves, it just allows blokes to really put in while they're out there. Um, you can see you're getting these blokes that aren't in the peak condition of their footballing careers, to say it nicely, who aren't afraid to have a crack. And um, they get out there and the coach tell them to give their go nuts for five, give us a couple of sets in defence and a couple in attack, and then you'll get a spell. So they were able to do that knowing that. But, but yeah, it's um, a great occasion. It looks like a great weekend. Following the game, these centenary jerseys are being auctioned that Barky are wearing tonight. Um, so they'll raise a bit of money out of that. And, but, yeah, it's about getting the two points here and that'll make the evening more enjoyable. Central West is certainly, uh, Central West Rugby League, certainly uh, all about giving back to the community. I mean, a couple of weeks ago we saw Blackhall do a very similar thing with their charity night where they auctioned the jerseys off. I know that uh, Blackhall, Barky, uh, they do fundraisers each and every year to help out the community. It's just fantastic to see, you know, games like tonight or every weekend that they have games across the Central West. It's a time that everyone can uh, come together and have a good night out. Yeah, it is. And when we spoke about Blackhall before, Barky's done it tough with drought as well, but probably haven't felt it to the extent that they have. And, and it's just something to come away and, and put your worries in your back pocket for an hour and a half and catch up with people and just have a chat, you know. And that's what, with push footy, that's what it's about. It's about coming together, playing with your mates or supporting your mates and just having a yap every week with someone and that's outside of your normal work life or your normal family life It might offer a different perspective or just to understand that people are going through the same thing you're going through. But, but yeah, bush footy's important, mate. I think that um, I think when you see footy teams in towns fold, I think it's really sad because it's a long way back from when you haven't got a footy side in your town. Yeah, it certainly is. Half time, 22 points to eight. The Barky Sanguine is leading the Thompson Tigers here at the Barky Showgrounds, part of the 100-year Barcaldon celebrations that have happened all this long Easter weekend. It's been a fantastic weekend, culminating tonight. Uh, with this game. Look, it's been a fantastic weekend so far. We'll take a short half-time break and we'll be back with the second half next. Just the northern mid, mate.
About to get underway with the second half here in Barky between the mighty Barky Sanguanas and the Tonks and Tigers. Part of the Barky 100-year celebrations. 22 points to 8, Cam Stallard and Mick Roach joining you to call all the action here at the Barky Showgrounds. As we said, it's been a massive weekend here in Barky. Culminating to this big match, great to see Barky with the traditional jerseys. The, uh, the coach of either side. Rochi, what are you saying? What are you saying to the players? Obviously, the Thompson Tigers have got a bit of work to do to catch up. Yeah, I think um, the coach is fairly happy with what they've done. Um, I think it's just about taking advantage of their opportunities a little bit better, mate. And for the Sanguinas, I think that Coach Aylett will be quite pleased, to be honest with you, at the scoreline. Um, yeah, I, I just don't think they've done a whole lot bad defensively. I think that it's just this one front row from Longreach that... He attracts defenders in, and they're probably not recovering into the line for a couple of tackles after that. But it's good, mate. I think I don't think that either coach would have been there would be no rousing going on. No, I don't think so either. So now the Thompson Tigers through the hands. Munro, uh, sorry, uh, Munns and his dummy half Hughes through the hands again. They go onto the left hand side of the field. Now, through the hands. Thought maybe the ball was going out in there, but he ran a nicely timed block play. Short side for the Thompson Tigers. They put it on the boot well too deep. Unfortunate there for the half, and it will be a seven tackle restart for the home side. It probably, um, yeah, obviously with the kick, not the start that Longreach were after, but. Um so they, they bounce up the ground, but they'll kick it from 20 metres out, so it's not a bad start to their half. 30 metres outside of their own line, Williams looks to run it himself from dummy half. Again, he's been a shining light, Williams. Like I said, I haven't seen this group of blokes play for a couple of years, and um, there's some, when I was here, there's some of these boys that were kids uh, that have really stepped up and are leading this town and footy side. The I think he's only 19, um, Connor Williams. Yeah, he out. was. He, he, I remember he played a couple of years uh, in the Central Horns comp was the, with the Jamfields Giants. There was a little bobble there, but he was able to regather it. Yeah, he had played a bit of junior footy when the Central West boys uh, headed in there, which is... Yeah, and that's a thing too for those who are watching and listening from afar. For some of these kids in their teen years to get footy, they have to travel there. So the side that they play with... Oh, hang on, Ricochet there, Welsh on the attack. Not going to get it, will be a turnover. Um, for them to get junior footy, some of them, they join with the Gemfields, which their, their home game is two hours and about two and a half hours from here is their home game. So they, um, I know that a lot of dads in particular, but clubmen really put in to get those boys over there for this reason. So they keep, keep playing footy. So if you stop playing footy at 13, very rarely you're taking it up when you're an adult. Yeah, that's right. Got a lot of uh, catching up to do if you do stop playing. So the Thompson Tigers having to work out of their own end. They need to uh, need some points early, I think, just to give them some scoreboard relief. Yeah, mate, there'll be no one here wearing maroon that hopes they do. Like I said, this rivalry is fairly fierce, and I don't think it's dulled any over time. So is it the biggest rivalry between, I guess... In the Central West, as such, with the Barky Sanguanas, the Long Reach, yeah, Long look, Reach Barky. I think so, mate. Yeah, I think. Look, no one likes Winton, um, and that's because Winton have been very successful of late. But um, yeah, I think just a, a town versus town rivalry. Here we go, Thompson. Here he goes. He's dynamite, mate. Straight through. Can he bust through the tackles? Have a look this at this. This will be kid. a beauty. Thompson from end to end scores his second under the posts. Does it in style. Home crowd love it. And they further extend their lead. The Barky Sanguanas, 26-8. Mate, that was impressive. Very impressive. He's been the best on park thus far. I don't think that's, don't think that's done anything to change anyone's views on that. But, um, but yeah, the rivalry, mate, it's, it's funny. It's a thing that if you ever lived in a small town, the town next to you you don't like, and uh, but it's exacerbated. It's even stories that... Um, someone from Longreach came over and poisoned the tree of knowledge and killed the tree of knowledge off. That's how bad the rivalry is. The 
you go. Uh, it's good to have a good rivalry amongst the uh, communities. This time, I think Rizal did get the message at half time just to chill out. It's probably taking that long to get up there after Thompson's break, mate. That was electric. Talk about a kick return. That was a kick return and a half. He's yeah. run it from about 10 metres outside of his own line and scored. Val Holmes like. Well, we just hope that uh, Zeke Thompson doesn't take off to the NFL. <laughs> Not sure how a, central, a Thompson from the Central West would go in New York, mate. But anyway, he'd give it a crack. You I'm never certain. know. The footwork on him. Comfortable 20-point lead now for the Sanguanas. So the Tigers to restart. Good run again. Thirty-five meters away. Yeah, will they get a penalty? Just for all those people who are watching, and it won't, we might be able to get it on the camera at some stage. I'm not sure, but we found the random South guy in the crowd. Have we? Matt, Maybe the Smiths Crisps jersey. Oh, yes. When you get a chance, been breaking play. Just might zip it down there and. And the try when it tries have been scored, I he's, reckon. He's certainly taken on the Centennial League theme. I think it's South Sydney's first ever jersey he's wearing. That's good. Blast from a pass, as you can see. The uh, strip that the Barky Sanguanas are wearing. On the left edge here. And just keep chipping away. It's Derry played it. Now, good work through the hands. Zal oh, goes through. This time he's that's able to take skipper. it well. Edgerton. And that's what the skipper does. That's so more like it. Well, he's been able to this time take it. And he earns himself a try. Under the post. He wasn't dropping that one. Good ball movement through the right edge. And they add another one to the tally. 32 plays eight. There we go. Did we just get him? Here he comes. He's, we've got a full frontal. Maybe cover his face in case he's a dentist. There you go. There's a random South guy. It's very impressive stuff. New South Wales Rugby League. So that's at least back to pre-97. Um, yeah, good try for the go there. They've looked slick this second half. Um, yeah, just looking at the Tigers in goal. I think they're just... I don't want to say the flag's up, but it's not looking like their enthusiasm is at any great level. So the uh, kick for touch, uh, kick for goal right in front of the posts. Great to see the support continuing to pour in here on social media. Flags go up once again. He's only missed the one tonight, Zal. With half an hour to go, it's 34 to eight. It's um, looking ominous for the visitors. Few Thompson Tigers supporters tuning in tonight, but majority for the Barky Sanders. No one's owned up to poisoning the tree? Not yet. All right. Not yet. Still got uh, 30 minutes of play remaining, though, that we can... That's a good kickoff. It's a great kickoff. Now Edgerton, the try scorer, will pick up. Bring the ball forward. This is the back row, Lockie Munro. On halfway, Williams. Back to Munro again. He's going to take his second carry in the set. His work rate's pretty good. I don't think he's had a rest either, mate. No, I don't think so. They've got uh, seven on the bench tonight. Hey, Thompson. Kick. Oh, it's good work by Hughes. Both fullbacks have probably been the picks tonight for either side. Now, Tigers. It's a good run just to get into some space on the right side of the field. Munns. Penalty. I think it's a penalty against possession. Ooh, play the ball penalty, yes.
Well, when you're trailing, it's one percentage you've got to get right, I guess. The fundamental of the game is playing it correctly. And Barkey gets the ball back. <laughs> For now, this is Odell. Slow to play it. Back to Williams. Center field. All the way. Zal through the hands. It's Thompson. Back on the inside edge. And can he get another one? Oh, he's quick to his feet again. He's nearly busting through. Oh, just. Dropped it short. The line. He tried to reach out. He was oh so close to getting two tries in as many minutes. And it'll be a scrum 10 meters out. Certainly making things difficult. We're sitting up here in the grandstand at the Barkey Showgrounds. It's a tremendous view in the old grandstand, but over to our right is um, Alan McIndoe, who was the guest speaker at the dinner last night. Also a CQ Capita's board member. And also at the back is the chair of that board, Bert Borland, who is a Bark Calden boy as well. So plenty of links to out this way across rugby league circles. I think Bert might have been a former president of the San Goenas as well before he's taking up his role with the QRL, which has now led him to Capra's land. So now the kick for touch is made. Here we go. We've got our first international viewer tonight. Oh, Paul from? Walsh from Wanaka, New Zealand. All oh, right. Going for the mighty Sanguanas. It's probably a little bit warmer here. Walsh, the Walshers are a strong Bar Calden family, but probably a little bit warmer here, Paul, than you are at the moment. So now the Thompson Tigers. With the ball again, that's Ebden. Offloads. He's been good with the offloads tonight. Barky territory. Show the ball. It's Hughes, isn't it? Uh, not with the halfback. They look very similar. Cutting. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I'm going to line both those boys up for you full time and you can look at them, Cameron. They're nothing alike. Okay. Oh, mate, I don't know that. That's Hughes there with yeah. the ball. Yeah. Into the in goal area. Oh, Rafter comes out. I thought he was going to get caught. Thompson Tigers chases there, just there's nowhere to be seen. It was a great opportunity to get a repeat set, but it just didn't fruition. Yeah, I think without knowing very well the players in this side of Long Reach, that's a great run from Welsh forward pass, though. Um, it seems like their best, the gap between their best and their, I'll say at worst, is really, really wide. Whereas I think in this Barky side, that it's a fair matter of skill across the park, and and when, and when you have things like, you have blokes like Adam Hughes who can see things unfolding and he can, he can just be too good for the rest of his team because they uh, can't see it enough to be involved in it. He's got a player on his launches at the moment. Getting some treatment. <laughs> Scrum will pack Thompson Tigers to get the ball again. Look, they really need to score points. They wish to be any hope of remaining a chance in this game. We've got tw yeah, 26 minutes to go, Cameron, up on yeah. that. 34 points to eight. Big news for Central West uh, later on this year. The Country Week game will be in Ilfracombe between the Tweeted Seagulls and the Capras. We were speaking, with, uh, well, speaking about Burton now before, but yeah. It'll be a big occasion for the West once again. It will be, mate. And then and um, the thing about country areas, people will travel to Ilfracombe to see that. Um, and you know what? They'll probably have a schooner or a ten at the well shot on the way home. Nothing wrong with that. So now, back of the scrum. How did tweet heads go this afternoon against Redcliffe, mate? I didn't catch that. Well, Corey Pakes won the man of the match. So I assume Redcliffe got the win. Don't know the score, unfortunately. 
certainly been a topsy turvy intra Super Cup season. Yeah, it's as, oh, apart from the bottom couple, it's as level as I've seen it. Which is good to see. Well, long reach on the attack here. On some points. Plenty of bodies in motion. Now cutting. Jason going for Cutting's the line. Oh, oh. He's bounced it. He's called him up for an obstruction, I'd say. Yeah, that's the call. Either or he lost yeah, it. Yeah, I think he bounced it anyhow. Yeah, I think so too. I think that was a slam dunk more than a uh, try. Thompson. It's a big hoof from Thompson. No one too keen in the crowd to take the uh, take the ball either. Now Williams takes it. It's Haywood. I started saying uh, in the first half, mate, that in, oh, I don't know what year it was, maybe it was 2009, no, maybe 10, we took a Central West 16 side away to the Capra's Junior Trials in Emerald, and um, this side headed Rockhampton with a minute to go, and Rockhampton scored on the bell eventually won, which is unheard of for Central West sides to be able to do. And of, out of that Central West team, I reckon there's probably about seven of those Barky lads that are playing in this first grade side. That's good. That's good to see that they've continued on with their footy. And it's really good to see that there are some young fellas on either side. You know, you don't want to have yep. footy sides uh, that are just filled with... Paul gold, Gallons. Yeah, the gold mouldies and such. Um, oh, that's a... Okay, ball. It was well reeled in. So now Martin's to the left-hand side. Another run, as he said. It's not too much structure out here in the Central West. It's just hard runs, which is what we like to see. You know, we've got to remember, too, that a lot of players, they travel an awful amount of distance to play some footy. You know, we read the story last year of a player, I think it was in Blackwell, 1,300 kilometres just to play each week. Including training, or that was just his trip for the footy? I think he'd come in to train. And yeah, on right. Friday stayed and then. Um, yeah, mate, it happens. And, and I think um, Longreach really struggled for numbers and that's continued this season for them. I think there are a couple of boys who come down from Hewenden. Yeah, right, eh? To play for them. So it's a similar sort of situation there. Hughes for the line. It's great to see the, the lengths people go to play rugby league. Now, can the uh, back rower and champion get over? It'll be held to That'll short. That'll be a good one. Champion. Oh, and what's happened there? Unfortunately, the sniper Falling got the sniper got cutting there for a second. Here's the last now for the Thompson Tigers. Hughes puts it on the boot, scooped up by the Sand hey, Raff, uh, Brendan Ralph has been really safe in his role on the right wing. Um, he's pulling in behind and cleaned up those kicks in goal well, as well as anything that's come his way. He's fielded well, so well, he's playing. He's had a good performance too. A bit as a secondary fullback, you know, protecting yeah. where Thompson. He's looking after one side of the field and Rafter is safely uh, looking after the other side. You know, the back the back three, certainly. The fullback and the two wingers have had an outstanding game tonight. Williams. Here comes the old boy, Mark Wren. We just wheeled him up to the sideline. He's jumped out of the chair and he's running on. Now the kick from inside the 40. High, straight into Hughes. Tell you what, a few of these boys can get a run in first grade with the way that they can catch the football, as I just say that. Look on. <laughs> Kiss of death. It normally takes you less time than a half and a half to put the kiss of death on someone. Well, we put him on the uh, kick, Reese Zar. Oh, we yeah, talked him right. up and said, we'll, we'll talk it through here, we'll run through. Yeah, that's as bad a strike as I've seen. The people in that caravan still haven't recovered. They're just out the uh, front fixing the roof at the moment for it. But no, look, uh, at the moment, they're just going through the motions either side. We got any updates on um, how the who, who the Broncos fared against the Raiders, mate? Oh, the Broncos and the Raiders. Well, oh, Haywood has just turkey trampled the long reach winger. Through the hands. That's Munro again, isn't it? No, it's the right front rower, whoever that is. 26-22, the Raiders got up. Yeah. Tough times for a Bron as you're a Broncos fan. The Titans obviously got over the Knights. Long ball out. Here we go. Edgerton uses his winger. Rafter for the line. Oh, it's oh. pulled it forward. Fortunately, it's been pulled up. 
getting a little bit excited there after looking to get his second try, but not to be at this time of the game. I think the Raiders have recruited well, mate. Very much so. Fo- well, well, their back row was uh, the English back row. But, the, but I want, what I mean is to live in Canberra, you've got to not have lived anywhere that's any good. So they're recruiting people from Cam- from England to live in Canberra. They think Canberra's awesome. That's why they stay there. Well, climatic will be you know, very wise, similar. It would be very yeah, similar. there's been as many people that smile there as well. So it's quite smart from tourism Canberra. And now the Thompson Tigers again. Having to work out of their own ends. So the Central West sees the five teams in this competition. Got obviously these two sides, the Blackwell Magpies, the Ilford Cone Scorpions and the Winton Devils rejoined the comp this year. Yep, the Winton Diamantina Devils. They might have only dropped the one or two games. They've been fairly dominant since returning. Oh, they've been a very strong club for a very long time, Winton. The grand final on the 9th of June. And then a couple of weeks later, they'll have the outback trials for teams to be selected uh, to head up to Thursday Island um, this year to play the Northern Remote Areas team. You'll be up there, Cameron? I believe so. We believe we'll be calling the game again. Taking the rod? I think so. Take the fishing rod. I think we've got to have, I think the journey's planes, automobiles and uh, boats as well to get to Thursday Island. I think it's a fair journey. Wonderful. But uh, look, it'll be great to call the action. We were there last year at Sunshine Coast Stadium. Yeah, we uh, called the Queensland Outback. Uh, big win. Oh. Here it goes. Thompson again. He's away. He started the Outback game. This will be his hat trick tonight. And all three tries, he scores underneath the post. And he wanted a little bit of a post try celebration as such before putting the ball down. Another one to the tally for the Barky Sanguators. 38. Points to eight. Well, she's all over bar the shouting. Um, I think there'll be plenty of that if the Goanners can rack in a couple of tries like that before the end of the night. So, the uh, Reese Zal. Line up. Slotted easily over the black dot. As he said, he's only missed the one to nine. 40 points to eight. The Barky Sanguin is getting over the Longridge Thompson Tigers. going to restart play. Bounced a few times. Now, we're going to work off the back fence. Mind you, the back fence is about 30 metres away from the uh, post. Fair way, yeah. It's a big oval. One of the, um, you talked about memories of being here. One of the worst memories was in the middle of winter training. And the grey nomads had moved in camping around the perimeter and you could smell the beautiful hot pots they were cooking and it was hard work. I reckon it would have been. Got any other good barky stories? I've got plenty, mate, that I'm not telling you tonight. (laughs) So on the last, Zal kicks downfield and bounces a few times, flag goes up on the eastern side of the field. Any PG ones we can share? That are half good. I'll have to have a think about it, mate. So you keep gibbering. Well, you can always. And I'll have a think about what I can share and what I can't. You can always sensationalise the stories because usually that's what happens. I can sensationalise it, you're right. Well, there's no fact checker on here either, so just. Mate, stitch how many up people anyone. are listening? So we had over 100 before. We got 104 fact checkers. Someone will surely come up to the grandstand and tell you if you <laughs> get a story wrong. Someone will text somebody. Someone will let someone know. It's great to reminisce on good times for the Barky Sanguinas. It's a good night for them. They'll be quite happy with the current score on the board. 15, no, just over 15 minutes remaining. The 
Thompson Tigers going through the motions. Certainly want a couple more tries, a few more points on the board. Not quite sure the ladder, how it's standing at the moment in the Central West season. There's only really a couple of rounds left because of the short season that they play. I think Longreach are naught. Are they, have they had a victory yet? I'm not sure. Um, I think Ilfrico might be finding this season a little bit tough. Uh, obviously, the Magpies are flying. I think the Devils are probably second elect at the moment, second. and the Goennas might be in third. I mean, then maybe Ilfrico came Longreach. Yeah, I think it... I'm going to take a stab. One of our fact checkers, if you can let me know how I'm travelled with that. Certainly, having a look at some of the scores, it seems to be a three horse race this year. No doubt, uh, Barky will be hurting after the loss last year. They going went out with that to uh, qualify for the grand final the long way and uh, went out to the eventual premiers. Mm. So what, everything is um, going right down to Blackhall at the moment. It's going, mate. We um we've got our caravan here with my beautiful family and. We're on the way home from a bit of an Easter holidays trip as the old boy Mark Wren just runs over two people down that right touchline. Um, and we drove through a few country towns and none are looking as good as Blackall. It's looking great, Nick. And I know the 10 inches of rain they had about four weeks ago might help. Good chase. Um, they had their 150 celebrations last year and since then they've really kept things tip-top in that main street. Well, I know Flop Rooney is a very proud clubman, a very proud Blackall man. You throw in there the... Um, Talking to South Sydney supporters, the wonderful Bevan Hoff. I'm not sure if Bevan and Julie are viewing tonight, but um, they're tremendous people that probably really epitomise what a town like Blackhall's about. Except the South supporter. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Yeah, that's the one blemish. It's all right. We can live with that. So Longreach, um, they're struggling at the moment. They're really finding it hard to get out of their own end here. 13 minutes to go. So they kick from their own, was it their own 10? Yeah, their own Thompson's 10. Thompson's got the ball on halfway, so they've got to find a way to get through these next half a dozen sets after have to defend. I'll tell you what, I'm quite happy to sit back and just watch this clinic that Thompson's putting on his fullback. Ah, he's tremendous, mate. It's my first viewing of him. It's very impressive. Now another cart forward there by Dean Malone. Did you say that he um, got man of the match in the Outback game last year, Cameron? I uh, don't know about man of the match, but I certainly know he played very well. Zeke Thompson. Here we go. Uh, Matty Schiltz uh, listening in. Um, and he has said, we got it right. Blackhall, Winton, Barky, Scorpions, Tigers is correct. Thanks, Matty. Now, through the hands. Zal oh, puts it on the boot. Chases oh. it. Scores. Reese Zal. Great piece of play from him. He's played very well in the 5-8 jersey tonight. 44 points to 8. He got sick of kicking goals, so he thought, I want to try. He got one. Lovely piece of play off the boot. Bit of entertainment for the home crowd. Yeah, it's good. They've taken a while to warm up. Like I said earlier, they might have just got a little bit excited. You know, gone that one night early, which can happen, Cameron. And um, might take a while to warm into this evening. So a good victory like this is certainly going to help the faithful to... Get themselves excited for the band that's gathering below. Well, we just saw and had pictures of the stage getting ready, the band getting ready behind us. Um, and as you can see there... Yep, these three boys in front of us are from Charters Towers. They drove down yesterday morning. Uh, the bass guitarist has got one of the greatest moustaches you'll see in the land. And they played very well at the dinner last night, so they'll be kicking off soon. I don't know if we can live stream that. I think we're going to have to turn it off after the game. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it is unfortunate. They're very good. Uh, and he adds the extra two to his try... Requests? There's some requests? Do they do requests? I don't know. Yeah. Ah, oh, mate, they're very country. Tell you what, I was, uh, I was at that Red Hot Summer Tour last night at the Rockhampton. Were you the youngest one there? Uh, no, mate, there was a fair, fair audience, good, good spread of people. They're taking requests. John Farnham had Sadie requested. He doesn't play it. He doesn't play the whole song. We played it last night. The whole song, the all whole the verses. S- well, I don't know how many verses are there. Seven. Okay, no, it wasn't seven. Maybe he got through one, if he, mate, one if and he, a half. If he gives all his secrets now, he can't keep doing his comeback to us. Where was it at, Cameron? Rockhampton, whereabouts? The Common. The Touchfields. Near, oh, down the river. Near Cal- yeah, nearly Caligan Park. Oh, right. Fantastic. He's still got it. 
Don't know why he retired 20 years ago. <laughs> it's been a pretend retirement. He's retired more times than Mark Wren. Yeah, you're getting close there, though. It's pretty... Yeah, they're I reckon nearly... Rennie's got a few in him left, yeah. I wonder when the Wren Cup's going to... I believe they're trying to... Uh, they, there was talk early on in the season to get it played after the season because, obviously, the Central West season started so early. Uh, but the classic battle between the Barky Sanguanas and the uh, Emerald Tigers. Tigers. Well, with Luke Wren, he's now traded the... Um, Traded the Emerald gear in for a set of budgie smugglers and he's over at the beach now, so he seagull? might be interested, yeah. mate. He might be trying to bring a team of gullies out. Well, I think there was some talk. I know Jay Edwards is tuning in tonight. He'll be able to let us know. Oh, big j -Lo. He's a very good man with um, very strong involvement in keeping rugby league going in country areas as well. Charleville boy. Yeah, he's from the, uh, the bush himself. Yep, he's been to many a disco at the School of Arts Hotel, I'm sure. So the Thompson Tigers now tend to go with the ball. Munns has a bit of a look around. Ebden. He's been their standout, mate. He's uh, in between him and Adam Hughes, I reckon. For the Tigers, uh, the Barky, everyone's had a good crack. There's been, um, yeah, I don't think there's been a poor performer for the Sango winners. There certainly has been standouts, but... This man here certainly been a standout. Thompson. You can suggest that he's got spiders on him tonight. He's certainly busted through a number of tackles. You know, the Barky Sanguana should be happy with their performance all round. Look, a couple of errors in uh, in their game, but saying that, uh, a good all round performance. Well, they rectified those, mate. The second half's been much better. I know the Tigers haven't had the energy they had to start the game, but I think. Um, the coach, Michael Aylett, will be very pleased with how they've attended to this second half. You know, the, the Thompson Tigers spine has been fairly good, I think. Probably just their forward pack, maybe. Just lack the go for Here we go. Barky Sanguan is bad. Foot chase. Thompson comes oh. out of nowhere. Oh. Wow. It is an absolute clinic tonight. Zeke Thompson. Well, he is just putting on a show. Try number four. They raise the bat at 50. Well, that'll depend on Zal's kick, mate. You're right. A few times tonight you've had to say that. I, was, I picked it early. So what is it, 48? 48. 48 to 8. I had the score wrong on our stream. Sorry. Apologies. Zales line the kick up from the sideline. Right footer, he might treat this one. Oh no, he's, he doesn't like him too far out. Lucky he's got a footy so they can get him close to the post. So 48 points to eight with seven and a half to go. Uh, can the Tigers hang on for this period or have Barker got a couple more in them to in fact raise that bat that Cameron spoke about moments ago? Well, the lock forward Edgerton has just come off. He's had a good dig too. He's not a real big fella, but he's um, certainly tidied up that middle. He's looked pretty good when he's had the footy in hand as well. So it's a good a good 70 minutes from him. Good contribution, and um, he'll earn his lemonade after the game this evening. The old boy Hanson's on there, still as nimble as ever. Takes a tackle about 30 out. Williams, oh, I thought he might have got himself a penalty there. There's the old fella Hanson again, nearly breaking through. They'll shift to the right here. Thompson with ball in hand. Oh, Zah, what's happened there? Got stuck in his sleeve. So long reach will have a scrum feed about 40 out from their own line. A chance to put in a couple of decent efforts. 
um, to finish off what was a good probably 25 minutes for them to start the game. Slow scrum. No one's in a great deal of hurry to get things rolling at the moment. They're happy just to let this clock wind down, I think. Making a great deal of ground off the back of this scrum set for the Tigers. It's a better carry. For those who are wondering where Cameron's gone, he hasn't fallen down the grandstand and dropped off his perch. He's actually just ducked out to the car to get some sound equipment so I might just zoom down to the ground at full time to, to have a chat to a couple of these boys from the Barkley side and just get there impressions on the game and how important a good performance for them was in front of all the old boys this evening. So he's just returning now. No one wants a piece of it. Oh, he's got... Oh, he's knocked it on. So he used it well to get that away. That's good footwork. Sam Welsh finds himself in the clear. Great cover tackle from that long reach player. He stayed in. Barkley will stay on the attack looking to... Was it, I think the scoreboard stopped, Cameron. Did it say 44 or 48? Yeah, I think it's 48. I think the scoreboard attendant's gone to sleep a little bit. Brad Harbottle carting it up, trudging up like the old war horse he is. Zal, chip and grubber again. He's going to do it again. Ah! Oh, fantastic. The king. It was all too easy for him. They will raise the bat this time round. He's forming a habit. 52-8. Eight. 52 to 8. There's the bat. It was a few minutes late, but but it's been raised. Now, I believe uh, you're going to go and have a few, a bit of a chat to yep. a few players. I'm going to do that if I can get out of the grandstand here. And if... Just doing a few little... It's just been an all-round great performance tonight, though, hasn't it? Yeah, mate, it has. It's... um. You can always you always run the risk of when you have big events, just letting you know, letting it get in your head a little bit and trying to do a lot more than you need to. And I think maybe early on the Goannas with their handling had a bit of that going on, um, but certainly they've yeah they've attended to the task really well in this second half. And be interested to talk to Coach Aylett, who's played in this club over a number of decades, um, and just see what the instructions were at half time. It was just about. Pull your head in, it's just another game of footy and let just let your fingers and your hands and let everything else do the talking for you rather than worrying about it too much. Well, they certainly did just that, didn't they? Conversion successful to 54 to, four to, uh, to 8. So, uh, the Barky Sanguinas will get the ball back you'd expect after this kickoff. Unfortunately, uh, maybe I'll put the mockers on them just a little bit there to say they were going to get the ball back. So, uh, just under two minutes remaining. So we just kid up here. Are you to head off. So, the scrum will pack here. Now 
allow the Thompson Tigers to work out of their own end. And another penalty, it seems. So, uh, Rachie's just heading down to the touchline now. We've got uh, 37 seconds remaining. They spill the footy. They scrub the pack 10 metres out. This will be, I reckon, nearly the ball game. Well, the Long Reach boys are rushing to pack the scrum. And the clock will stop. Well, the scoreboard attendant's gone to sleep. The clock won't stop. 12 seconds remaining. The siren will go with uh, five seconds remaining. They'll feed the scrum here, the Barky, Sanguanas. Short side they go. And uh, I reckon that'll be all she wrote. As the uh, siren sounds, the whistle blows. And the Sanguanas get the win here at Barky Showgrounds. 54 points to eight. It's just been a, an all-round terrific performance by the Barky Sanguanas for uh, their 100-year celebrations. And uh, Rochi's down there, about to have a chat with the coach. Baylor with me here. Thank you. Yeah, mate, copy, go mate. for it. Right, uh, come mate. Good performance, particularly in the second half. Uh, tell me about doing that in front of the older boys around. Oh, mate, it's awesome. Uh, the boys... We had a bit of a talk at half time and we just said to stick to their structure, mate, and also pointed to the chest, mate, the Goannas there. Uh, as we said before the game, there's uh, probably 150 or more old fellas in the crowd that would die for this jersey, and that was the um, the notion the boys were with tonight, mate, was to, just a passion in their jersey and their club and their town, and our job was to, um, you know, get out there tonight, make a good win, and uh, create some smiles for everybody. It's, it's a great feeling to win. Good on you, mate. Well done, Quack. The coach of the Barky Sanguanas, Michael Aylett. So, uh, the boys shaking hands at the moment. Uh, as we said, a pretty clinical performance, though. 54 points to eight. The score here at the Barky Showgrounds for this rounds game. So the Barky boys show their appreciation for the home crowd. Uh, Cam, just got the skipper down here with me, mate. Tell me about how proud that is, how you feel. Oh, mate, it's awesome to come over with a win like that. On the, the boys are pumped, and uh, I think we really love it. Zon and just sticking to what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, we got away from the structure a few times there, and uh, that's shown. Like, they've got a couple points there. And I think uh, the coach, just he really wants to get us back to playing our structured footy because... Uh, when the times get tougher, you need to be playing that well. Mate, well done. Go and celebrate that with the old boys. Cheers, mate. Beautiful. The uh, captain of the Barky Sanguanas. They're fairly happy, as you'd expect, the Barky faithful. Great performance from them. I'll just hang about a bit, Cam, and I might just try and get um, old Rennie. I'll try and get Mark Wren in a minute. He's not short of words. He'll be happy to chat. Maybe Zeke Thompson as well, the four-try man. Put on a display. I think they've got to get a team photo. These classic jerseys. Fans starting to set up a big night. Thanks to all the support, too, on social media. We do greatly appreciate it for the 100-year celebrations. Barky Club, I'm sure, have enjoyed... Everyone's hospitality over the Easter long weekend. So now the official photograph is being taken. As you can see the Longridge boys just walking off to the sheds now. Well done to them as well. Obviously, it's been a tough night for them. The Barky side were just too good. Too strong for tonight's game. So well done to the uh, Long Reach boys. Plenty of support for them as well.
Hello, righto. I've got Mick Hansen here with him. It's, um, big weekend. It's the number of teams over the decades, and you've played with a lot of those blokes over the years. To be able to play tonight with a lot of these young fellas too, how does that feel, mate? Oh, mate. Bruce, we're just trying to hustle the board and hold on to what we've got left, but not a lot, but just trying to guide them into the season or so, give them a bit of direction and that. And, 10 minutes sits is all we can handle nowadays, so yeah, no, we're going good. I'm enjoying it still. Good on you, mate. Enjoy the night. Will do, thanks. Mick Hansen, proud uh, Barky boy. So the boys off to the sheds now to celebrate. Uh, that is it for us tonight. Roach, thanks very much for joining us tonight. We've uh, greatly appreciated your assistance. And uh, from all of us here, we would like to congratulate the Barky Sanguanas on the win. Thanks for tuning in. We'll enjoy the rest of the night. And for you, I hope you've had a fantastic Easter weekend. And we'll catch you sometime soon.